All right, hello again, everyone. Before I get started, I'd like to say thank you to my very first subscriber. Today, I'm going to be talking about vertex groups. Vertex groups are something that are very important, no matter what you're going to do in Blender. A vertex group is, uh, well, it's a group of vertices. They have three main uses in Blender, those being vertex selection, modifiers, and armatures. We're going to go over all three of them in different sections. First thing we're going to talk about is using vertex groups as a selection tool. To create a vertex group, you simply select a mesh and then click on this little green triangle icon under the properties section. Go over to where it says vertex groups and click the plus icon. By default, it's going to name it group, but I'm going to make a few extra in order to explain something in a minute. So we will create some more and let's name them group A, group B, and group C. For the purposes of vertex selection and for modifiers, the name of your group does not matter. It is completely arbitrary. You can name them anything you want, but I would suggest making it something that you're going to remember. In order to add vertices to our newly created groups, we can do one of two things. First is by entering edit mode. We can hit tab and just select some vertices. Once you've selected them, you can come over here and select which group you want to put them in. We'll do group A. Simply click assign and now they will be in the group. Now if I repeat the process with these vertices for group B and group C, I can deselect all of the vertices and when I go over to the group list now, when I click select, it will automatically select the vertices in that group. And you do the same with group C and group B. The select function over here is binary, meaning that the verts are either in the group or they are not in the group. However, when it comes to modifiers or armatures and rigging, there is another dimension to the groups, and that is the vertex weight. Vertex weight is measured from 0 to 1. 0 meaning that it is not in the group at all, and 1 meaning that it is fully in the group, so to speak. The easiest way to visualize this is actually to go into the other method of group editing, which is weight paint mode. So if we select an object, go to the top left, and click the drop down here to go to weight paint mode, you will see that the object has changed colors. This coloring will change depending on which group you select over here. So we have group A selected now, and we select B and C. You can see the colors change. The way these colors work is that the blue vertices here are all a weight of zero, and red is a weight of one. And this gradient here shows all the weights in between. You can actually edit these weights in two ways. You can either hit tab again to go to edit mode. You can see uh, with group A selected, if I grab these other vertices which were previously zero, we can use this weight slider here and say make it 0.5 and assign them to group A. When we go back, you can see they're now green with a weight of 0.5 or we can just remove them entirely and it's back to zero. Now the word paint in weight paint comes from this red cursor that we have here. So if we have the brush tool selected, we can set, click brush, make sure that this here is set to add, and with the weight set to one, we can then paint the weight onto our cube, go to subtract, and erase the weight from those same vertices. Now, uh, as a beginner, you're really only gonna need to worry about the add and subtract brushes. So everything that you do in Blender or anything you do on a computer really is uh, just math and uh, modifiers are no exception. Behind the UI of every modifier is essentially some sort of uh, mathematical expression with a blank variable and that variable is the vertex weight. For example, uh, in our little scene here I have a cube and a sphere and on the sphere if we go to modifiers I have a shrink wrap modifier on and if I set the target to the cube it immediately wraps every single vertex straight onto the cube. And when I move it around, you can see it's totally sucked onto the surface. This is because if you leave this vertex group box empty here, the modifier will essentially treat this entire object as if every single vertex has a weight of one. However, if we set this to one of the groups that I created, you can see that suddenly that looks a lot different. If we switch to weight paint mode and hide the modifier for a moment, you can see that all of these vertices have a weight of one and then all of these have a weight of zero. So when we show the modifier, only those vertices will snap down to the cube 
with the modifier and the rest are completely unaffected. When I start to remove some of the weight from these other vertices, suddenly they stick up a little bit. And this is because as we remove the weight, there's still part of the group at least a little bit. Normally the modifier is set to take the, vert the vertex from its original position and snap it down onto the surface of whatever I'm wrapping it onto. And for these few vertices down here that still have the completely red weight right here, they are gonna snap all the way down and stick right to the surface. But as I start to remove the weight from these ones, you can see they still move from their original position, which is up here, but they don't go all the way down. They only go part way. So if the weight was 0.5, they would go exactly halfway in between their original position and the position that they would be snapping to. Now, one thing to keep an eye out for is that uh, once you have the vertex group set in a modifier, if you change the name to anything else, it will break the modifier. However, all you have to do is just go back and select the new group and the name at that point doesn't matter. However, like I said, if we go back and re-edit this name to group one, you do have to go fix the modifier. The final context that you would really uh, use a vertex group in is with rigging and armatures. I have a very angular character here that I just made in a few seconds. Uh, now uh, we're gonna rig our box man here using the vertex groups just like before. I'm not going to go over how to make a rig, nor am I going to make one any more complicated than this. But uh, in order to attach your mesh to a rig, uh, what you need to do is select your mesh, hold shift, and click on your armature to select it. Hit control P and select armature deform. And what this does is it will automatically add to your mesh this armature modifier. Now if we select the armature and grab it to move it around, you can see that the mesh follows, but when we go into pose mode, which you can do by hitting control tab actually, or use the drop down menu up here, um, go to pose mode. When I move the bones around, nothing happened. And this is because the armature uses its modifier and vertex groups to determine how the mesh will deform with each bone. This is the only time where the name of the groups actually matters. Um, with armatures, rather than setting a specific vertex group to modify it like we did with the shrink wrap, uh, it actually uses the bone name to decide which group is affected by the bone movement. Any vertex group with the same name as a bone will be affected by that bone and follow its transformation. Now, if you, you'll actually see you can set a vertex group right here, uh, but that's just kind of to filter which vertices are affected by the armature at all. Um, so you can 99% of the time just leave this empty. Uh, however, when we go to our groups here, you can see there are none. And you can do the rigging in one of two ways. Like you can see here, we have this bone called arm.l. One way to uh, create the group is just like before, to manually hit the plus here, name it arm.l, exactly the same as the bone. Select any vertices that you want to be attached to the bone, hit assign. And now when we go to the pose mode, you can see that the vertices will follow the bone. And uh, also just like before, if we select the armature first, then shift click on the mesh and go to weight paint mode, we can use control to select a bone. Uh, when we paint, you can see that it automatically makes the arm.r group over here. And if I can paint these, you can see now when I hit R to rotate the bone, anything that I painted will follow. I'm gonna fast forward through it while I create the rest of the groups, just one moment. So now that all of those are painted, when we go to pose mode, all of the vertices will follow when I move the bones. Uh, however, if I grab our arm L bone again, if I rename the arm.l to AAAA, when we go back in here, go to pose mode, suddenly this bone doesn't work anymore. But if we go back and just rename this to arm.l, it works great. However, with the other way around, you don't actually have to worry about this. So right now this is arm.l. But if we go to the bone here, if I rename this to tractor trailer on the bone name, when we go back to this, suddenly the vertex group is also renamed to tractor trailer and it still deforms just fine. Now that would uh, not be advisable because you would quickly get confused if you started naming all your bones after different vehicles. So we'll keep this arm.l. 
uh, and again the name is automatically changed and the deforms are still working. The final thing to keep in mind when it comes to uh, weights and armatures is actually that there's no limit to how many groups a vertex can be in. So uh, within one group it's limited to a weight of one, however um, there's no limit to how many groups it can be in. Now if I put the sphere here into weight paint mode, I made five groups on the side here. You can see that the vertices here or really everywhere, they can maintain weight in as many groups as they want. And you can do this for infinitely many groups for any particular vertice. Um, and this doesn't really matter for uh, regular selecting or the modifier use like with the shrink wrap. With armatures though, it can get really messy really fast. So right now, if I move this arm or this arm, they look kind of exactly how you'd expect. However, if I select the leg bone here, you can see that the leg is red as it should be, and it deforms as it should. But if I go and paint weight up here on the arm, now suddenly it's a mess. But not only is the leg going to now affect the arm, but when I go to select the arm, these all still have a weight of one, but the deformation is messed up. These vertices in the front have a weight of one in both groups. So with a, with a proper weight of one in only the singular group, the vertex will completely follow the bone wherever it goes. But in this case, even though they have a weight of one, these ones have a weight of one in this arm group. The ones in the front here are going to lag behind because they have a one in this, but they are also tying themselves to this leg. So even if the leg doesn't move, it's in its resting position these will still not properly deform. There are two ways to fix this. One is to select your leg L group here, set your brush to subtract, and subtract away all of the weight, and now the, def the deforming is back to normal. Uh, this is basically impossible on anything more complicated than what I'm painting here. Like if you have a real, a realistic character or even a cartoony character but with a very complicated rig and weight paint setup doing what I just described is you're never going to solve your problems uh, so thankfully weight paint has an easier function to keep track of this so if we mess that up again and maybe we'll even uh, not only use the leg bone to mess it up but we'll put some from the other arm and the head bone and the spine so now this arm, you can see the deformation is totally whack, and that's because these arm vertices have weight with every bone on the body. So now you'd have to go and select this arm, clear the weight, select this, clear the weight, select this, clear the weight, and uh, nobody wants to do that. So if we select our arm bone, so this is the bone that we want the weight to be on. Uh, thankfully, weight painting has a function that is called auto normalize. So we go to tool over here, and uh, oh, if you can't see that, you press N on the keyboard, click tool, go to options, and right here it says auto normalize. And what this will do is uh, this is only for armatures. Auto normalizing will not affect any groups that do not share a name with a bone. So if I add if I just add a random group here and just call it RRRR, this group will not be affected by the auto normalizing at all. But uh, what auto normalize does is it will basically make it so that when you select the bone and you go to, to add weight, these already have a weight of one. But when I paint, it will basically make it so that no matter what, the bone that you are painting will only have a combined weight of one. Meaning that right now it has one weight on the, these vertices, have a weight of one on this bone, and a weight of this one's got some weight with this bone, and this bone, and this bone. So when you think this vertex sort of has a cumulative weight of, so let's say, seven, because it has one weight on seven different bones. And what the normalize does is basically make it so that when you paint the vertex at all, it will ensure that the cumulative weight is one. So when I have this set to one, it's going to automatically subtract the weight from all these other groups so that this equals one. So you can see uh, like if we move these other bones a little so that the arm is all messed up now. When I select the arm, the only thing I have to do is make sure I have auto normalize on, select this to add, and just paint. And when I paint, we can reset all the bones. Now the arm deforms exactly like normal. And when I select all the other groups, there's no more paint on this at all. 
and just to show you as well if we go again make this R say this was for smoothing and this is for shrink wrap warp shrink warp um, we can select this and paint a bunch of weight on it paint some on this smooth one when I go through and select these other ones now there's no issue because even though I have auto normalize turned on these are not bone name so when I paint it doesn't subtract from them and then when I paint these groups it doesn't subtract from the bone ones anyway that's uh, kind of all I had to share about vertex groups um, hopefully this helped you guys understand a little bit more of the nuances when it comes to vertex groups so you don't get so confused in the future if you want a video made on a certain subject just let me know and if I know anything about the subject then I will gladly explain it thanks for watching and have a nice day